right, welcome to today's episode of Tomorrow's Leader, where we dive deep on all things leader related, related to leading yourself and leading others. I'm John Larita, your host. I got a great guest, very interesting guest with me today. I've got Stephen Sachs, entrepreneur, author, author of uh, most recently the Intelligent Investor Handbook. Stephen, uh, welcome to the show. Well, thanks very much, John. I'm really pleased to be here. You got it. You're all the way in the UK, so we're dealing with. Uh, the geography, the time zone changes, and here I feel like I'm in the same room with you. I know, technology is amazing, isn't it? I love it, I love it. So I, I, I wanna dive into your, uh, you've got a really interesting background, and I, I, I think it's always, uh, it's always interesting when someone has success in one industry and then they totally pivot and make a drastic change and they have a success in another. That's a rare breed of human being, but you started in the fashion industry, super successful you've transitioned into the business you're in now which we'll talk about but take us through that a little bit like how did you make that why did you make that what happened okay so um what i was doing previously involved a lot of travel and it was very very immersive um so we were making products in generally in asia and we were selling products in europe and also in the united states so i was kind of like traveling um, 60, 70 times a year internationally, like on average more than once a week. I was on sort of like nodding terms with the guys on customs at the airports. And whilst the novelty was fantastic earlier on, after a time, it became a bit of a grind. And what I found was that I, I was doing the job of going to places, checking production or, or selling things. But all the social stuff that goes with it. And in fashion, there's a lot of social stuff, right? Um, I, I really, I, I lost the enthusiasm for that. So I, I do the business, go up to my room, go online, um, you know, do, do some work and what have you, go to bed, get a flight the following morning, go home. And after a bit, I thought, well, I'm just going through the motions here. This, this is not really, um, this is not really why, why, why I sort of started this business. So I decided to exit the business, which I did at the end of 2016. And I I thought I'd go into something similar again because I'd had a number of different, um, quite similar businesses where we were always trading products. And then I thought over Christmas, uh, as we came into 2017, maybe maybe I need to do something a bit different. And I, and I was kind of 51 at that time. And I thought, well, and it's like a bit of a midlife crisis. Well, maybe I should do something entirely different. So then I thought about what is it about the work that I do that really excites me? And then when I reflected on it, it was it was the deals. It, it was being the business being in some kind of problem or there's some kind of opportunity. You need some money. They've got it. You know, there's a transition you need to manage within the business. And those moments that's kind of when i came alive that's when i thought wow this is amazing and i and i did things in the business that that nobody else could do in my business so that that was where i i added all the value and of course those are the most valuable moments from a financial perspective and then when those moments are over and you go back to all the normal stuff which is like going you know flying around and, and dealing with um the minutiae of management it's kind of like i was going to sleep again and um so i thought i know Maybe I could create a business where I just do that, but do that for lots of other different businesses. And that's what I started in 2017. And, and then gradually that kind of, um, I, I kind of created funding that around offering services that people were prepared to pay for, being successful with that and realizing, oh, hang on a minute, maybe I've got a set of skills here that I've developed through um, buying and selling and owning a number of different businesses and growing them over time that I could um market um it as a service and that's what i started doing so that's why i started in 2017 i wrote some books about it i i um i franchised it actually i grew it and i've got, I've got a number of different sort of partners within the business now and i haven't looked back and now i i'm so pleased i made that transition because um honestly the garment industry is not an easy business if you can succeed in that business believe me you can succeed you can succeed in any business i'm sure well here's what i find fascinating about what you said first of all you know there's so many people that are in a career in a path 
that they're just they're feeling what you felt the burnout the the um, lack of enjoyment whether it's travel related stress related whatever they're just not fulfilled and you made a decision that okay this was not right this is not the right path you weren't in the right place and and left it without quite knowing exactly what we're going to do which i think there's so many people that just say hey i don't know what else or i don't have the answer yet so i'm just going to stay in this path and they end up stuck there for life and and i think and i talk to people all the time about the fact that sometimes you'll start to see the other paths once you leave the path you're on you, it's not like you will see all the answers from your perspective you've got to take a risk and you got to take a so it sounds like that's exactly what happened it wasn't until you cut free of what was no longer fulfilling you and then ultimately you started to realize what makes you excited and and now you've got this great business yeah. that you love doing. It, it, yeah, for sure. It was an iterative process. I, I didn't know what it was at the beginning. I kind of had a, a, a kind of a feeling what it might be like. So what I tell you, what, I tell you, what the actual method I followed was, and it was all around business networking. So in London, like I guess in many cities in the United States and around the world, there are literally no shortage of um, networking opportunities. I mean, literally, you can network here, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day if you want to. And that's exactly what I started doing. I literally just started turning up to everything. And what I found was the room was full of service providers, accountants, lawyers, business coaches, and and there was no, like, no clients. Everybody's, it's almost like kind of going fishing in a sort of um, post-nuclear apocalypse <laughs> or something where literally all the fish are dead right. and there's just fishermen. And you're thinking, oh, hang on a minute. I, I, I don't want to be like these fishermen. I've got to be like a different kind of fisherman. Mm -hmm. And that's where I, I kind of worked out um, what what is not being offered here. And what was not being offered was innovative uh, approaches to finance. There were definitely finance brokers and there were definitely accountants and there were definitely bank managers. But there was nobody kind of um, dealing with financial issues from an entrepreneur's perspective. And given the fact that I'd never been in banking or in accountancy myself, I was ideally placed to be able to empathize with business owners about what their issues were and to come up with innovative solutions to whatever their issues were. And that's kind of how I built the business around that. I love it. I, I love it. So talk about, um, you and I were talking before uh, the show started about what you've kind of come into, which is this realization about people taking ownership for their failures and how, how, why is that important? How do you brand it or label it? Cause I love it. Um, share your perspective on that. Okay. So in, in business, uh, business owners, we, and, and, and people, individuals, everybody, actually, we, we tend to walk around in a sort of psychological armor. And that is that, um, you know, and certainly when, when you meet somebody for the first time, you, you you don't want to you don't want to lower your guard um and you, you so you, you have an elevator pitch right so we'll have elevator pitches my elevator pitch of funding nav is that we help businesses uh, that have more ambition than cash that's kind of so that's what, that's what we say um but at an elevator pitch is kind of um a statement of ambition sometimes a bit of bullshit and, and and sometimes it can be just a bit meaningless and it doesn't tell you much about the person themselves if you hit it off with somebody and you get to know them and become friends with them over time they might tell you a lot more about themselves you know you might really dig down and the, the i suppose one of the deepest levels is when they admit to you how they fucked up and in business it's inevitable that you're going to fuck up, right? And in fact, I think Winston Churchill said that the definition of success is the, the speed of which you can move between failure. Um, so it's kind of inevitable that we're going to fail. And, you know, if you're if a real failure is when you experience a, a moment of failure and you think, oh, that's it, I'm just chucking the towel in. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to do that. But... If you come back from failure and you fail again and fail again and fail again, in the end, you'll succeed. By the by by the, the law of averages, you'll succeed. Even if you're not that smart, you'll succeed in the end if you keep coming back. It's like that um, 
that Rocky film, was it Rocky One or something, where he gets hit down by Apollo Creed and yeah. he's kind of and Apollo Rocky Creed. Rocky One, yeah, 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 yeah. two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they're all the same, right? <sighs> and then he and then he comes back and he yeah. and, you know he gets hit again and he hit and then he, eventually he, he goes for it and uh, gives himself some brain damage, but it takes Apollo down. Um, and yeah, and business is like that. It, you know, you can only succeed when you've experienced failure. And I can tell you that. The in in the United in the United States actually I think that you're much more honest about this than we are here. I think in the United Kingdom we are um, we, we, we're not very forgiving of that, and there's a general assumption that people are just successful and and are going to back a success. If you go to a Silicon Valley VC with a business plan, one of the questions they're likely to ask you is, "Tell us about your biggest fuck up," and and tell us what you learned from that. Because they don't want your first fuck up to be on their check. They want it that right. you've already done it, you've learned from it, and now they're getting the benefit of that. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm launching Fuck Up Nights here in London starting next Tuesday, the 11th. And um, essentially, I've got four people coming to speak to an audience of uh, people we've sold tickets to. And each of them are going to be talking about an enormous fuck up uh, that they've had in their lives. One of the guys actually went to prison for um, a number of years because he got ultimately he, he got involved in a Ponzi scheme, which kind of um, that's a big fuck which up. was not intentional at the outset. Um, and his life changed immeasurably. I mean, you know, from big, like literally multi millionaire, um, only private jets, boats, places in different parts of the world to prison cell divorced like literally the biggest fuck up you can ever imagine but now he, he's learned from that he hasn't he hasn't bounced back and and this is not the narrative we're looking for we're not looking for that normal narrative it's like yeah i was great then it was shit and now look at me i'm so great again it's like it's like alcoholics anonymous you know when you go there and even if even if you've had a drink for like 10 years you still say oh, i'm steven mm -hmm. i'm an alcoholic because you know that you're always susceptible to that. Yeah. And as business owners, we're always susceptible to failure. Even the biggest, the biggest business, the biggest business successes can fail and do fail. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's it's drawing it's drawing people's attention to that and getting people to communicate more quickly and more honestly at a much deeper level than you would do normally. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So and I love that because there's and I love the, the that first question uh, from 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 a VC is is, you know, what's your biggest fuck up? I love that because you're right, you know, and if somebody can't acknowledge that and take ownership and, and can't tell you what they learned from that, then they're not they're, they're, they're absolutely destined to, to repeat the same thing over and over again. Uh, but you brought up an interesting fact, which I think is so true. And it, this was in our earlier conversation, I think, with people's just intent is so much to put up this this facade of success. And we don't want to drop our guard. And it's not only externally, but it is internally. We don't want to think about the stuff that we're not good at or that we failed at. I mean, what's the balance there? I mean, obviously, you don't want to live in negativity in your head and the failure and the setbacks and everything. But you st you have to be really good at reflecting back. Why did something happen? What did what would I have done differently next time when I'm in this situation? What will I do differently? I mean, what's the balance there between you know how much of your brain space do you need to be focused on those failures and what you learn from it versus okay, let me clean the slate. I don't know. You know what? As entrepreneurs and business owners, you. you You've got to be optimistic. It's very difficult to run a business as a pessimist, right? Your glass has got to be pretty much half full. Um, so, you know, as, as business owners, we're kind of, um, I suppose we're up. We're, you know, you know, they say that um, progress relies on the um, unreal, the, the unreasonable man, because you know, the reasonable guy just says accepts things the way they are and just kind of like you know does whatever he's going to do or she's going to do. Whereas all progress relies on the unreasonable guy because he looks at something and says, I'm going to change this and it doesn't suit me. I, I think there's an opportunity here. I'm going to go off and do it. And and normally they're wrong, actually. Um, you know, and my, my 
my latest book, The Intelligent Investor's Handbook, it's all about that. I mean, the hit rate of um, in business investors, even highly qualified business investors at, at an early stage, VCs that have whole research teams, if they get one in 10 right, they're, they're, they're jumping. They're really, really pleased with that. And so nine out of 10 of their choices fail. And as business owners, we can expect a similar level of failure to that. And unless you keep coming back 10 times on average, I guess, then you're, you're, you're basically going to fail forever. So I think that, yeah, you, you've got to quickly um, ex own the failure, get, have a quick grieving process, say, right, yeah, that fucked up. I, I, I really get it. These, this is what I've learned from it, and now I'm going to go again. And now, and, and obviously, once you go in again, yeah, you, you, you're more robust. You built it, uh, you own it, and you may fail again. And then you've got to keep up and, and keep going. And in the end, you'll 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 burst through. You'll you'll, you'll succeed. It's inevitable. Yeah. Let me ask you what I know is going to be a tough question. You work with closely with businesses, uh, lots of them, and uh, you you obviously provide them with that lifeline, so to speak, the cash and helping them fuel their their progress. Uh, but it, at the same point, again, vast majority of them fail. A uh, fraction of them succeed at a really high level. In your opinion, what is the one or two most critical things that you see in those leaders that run the successful versus the failures? Um, I, I wish I could ask that question. I, I, I wish I was bright enough to walk into a business and say, wow, I can, I am positive that this is going to succeed. Because if, if, if I was that clever, I would be a lot wealthier than what I am if, if I could really do that. You know, sometimes, um, sometimes people some businesses require i suppose you know like a, a star some businesses require a good, a good administrator you know there, there've been there's been lots of studies about this right mm -hmm. and i can think of um um i can think of some books actually which i've read that specifically focus on this i, I think that um they say about leadership don't they that you know you've got to be looking in the mirror when you're considering failure and looking through the window when you're when you're achieving success. So if if your business is failing, it's down to you. You've made some poor decisions there. You 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 put the wrong people in, the wrong systems, the wrong idea, whatever. So if your business is succeeding, that's down to everybody else. And you need to go, you, what you should be investing your time in then is going around saying, Hey John, you're doing a terrific job there. You know how can we support you better? How can we help you more? Mm -hmm. But if the business is failing, I, I don't, I don't. Is that put me going kicking your ass? I, I need to, I need to sort out, you know, my issues. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, I think I think the biggest thing maybe is is that level of maturity and a leader that they can um, that, that 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 it's all about everybody else when it's succeeding, but all about them when it's failing. They're, they're, if, they're, if they're big enough to accept all that, then I think they're, they're destined to succeed. I love that. That's fantastic. That's a, I, I, that's a great answer. That's a really tough question. And uh, I, I, I appreciate your authenticity and, and, and uh, in saying that it is tough and that you're not certain, but that's a great answer there. I, I love that. And you're so uh, you're so right. I you know I talk to as you do uh, business owners, CEOs all the time, and that's the whole essence of this podcast is you know what do the truly most successful ones do differently, think differently, how are they different? And it's it's hard. It's not a you know you talk to ten people, ten CEOs, they all sound great. They all are very smart. They know their business. They know their industry. Um, it's the very, very small things that make huge differences. Um, and what makes one person do something so far in advance, so far, uh, f so much further and better than another person is not necessarily what you see on the surface. That's right. And of course, there's always luck. You know, and, and I appreciate you can't get lucky multiple times, but you could get really lucky once. Um, 
you know, there are lots of stories of that. People who just appeared in the right place at the right time once and did really well from that. Yeah. But you you can't rely on that consistently. Yeah, exactly. So um, uh, thanks so much for sharing. I know I don't have a whole lot of time with you. Uh, you're doing something really cool tomorrow. Uh, and I thought that's really amazing because it tells a lot about the type of guy you are. And for the people that can't see you and they're listening to this because this is on audio and video, I mean, you're 57. You look like you're in your mid 40s. Uh, yeah. And tomorrow, I think, is an example of what your secret to to looking great and feeling great and success is. What are you doing tomorrow? Share with the audience. So uh, two weeks ago, I cycled from London to Paris and I did that in two and a half days with a group of people. And it's 220 miles the way that we did it. And I've got a free pass this weekend. My wife's off in, um, in the Caribbean actually for the weekend. And I thought, I'd see if I can do that myself over the weekend and then i gradually kind of like developed the idea so actually maybe i can see if i can do that in one day so i've I plan myself a 220 mile route around uh the east of england which i'm going to set off at four o'clock tomorrow morning on and basically see if i can cycle 220 miles around that route in one day probably about 15 hours of sort of pedaling but the big challenge is calories so that's going to burn eight to ten thousand calories and i need to work out how i can ingest all those calories without puking the whole lot up again <laughs> so that that's my challenge tomorrow how many breakfasts how many lunches yeah. how many how many snacks i can have in the day and still yeah. keep going yeah have you figured that out i mean do you I'm, I'm thinking i don't know do you stop and have like a big you know meatball parm sandwich at lunch or what i mean eating little things or what yeah um i haven't entirely figured it out i'm gonna go i'm going to my cousin later this evening and um I've, I've heard that what you eat the night before is really important so i'm going to stuff my face with pizza and pasta and then have an early breakfast tomorrow and a second breakfast and uh, just just keep going and have a bag full of bananas and stuff and just just see how i get on with it but i think i think the nutrition is absolutely key to this yeah that's amazing man you gotta you gotta let me know how that goes and uh i'll i'll include it in the show notes so people okay people i will have, too I'll, I'll send you a message yeah that's incredible good for you well it says a lot about who you are and obviously you know how you lead yourself mentally and physically and 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 ties into what you're doing you're helping other people do things that they wouldn't have been able to do without your help so i know a lot of people listening are going to want to engage with you and find out more about what it is that you do and maybe get your books. Um, how, what's the best way for them to do that? Where, where do they go? Sure. Well, the books are available on Amazon, of course, as um, all books are. Uh, one's called Reboot Your Business by Stephen Sachs. The other one's called The Intelligent Investor's Handbook. Um, and then they can contact me through LinkedIn. Uh, just check Stephen Sachs. That's S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S-A-C-K-S. Or by email at stephen.sachs at fundingnav.com or check out the fundingnav.com website, which basically explains what we do and how we do it and uh, some case studies of what we've done with other businesses. Awesome, terrific, man. Well, this has been great. I, I've loved our conversation. I, I appreciate your insights. I know it's been valuable for the audience. I know I learned a few things and uh, keep us up to date with everything, not just your bike ride, but uh, how things go in the future with the business and everything. Thanks, John. I really appreciate that. You got it. And thanks all for joining today. We've been here with Stephen Sachs, entrepreneur and author of the Intelligent Investor Handbook. We'll have everything in the show notes. Be sure to check him out for sure. And we'll keep you posted on his progress, of course. And uh, as always, like, share, subscribe, go down below, give a five-star review, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.